Hey guys, it's Haley from The Modern Ferret, and today's video is for all you new ferret owners out there, or those of you thinking about getting a ferret, and you wanna get everything in order before you bring your ferret home. In this video, we're gonna talk about basic housing requirements, food, toys, accessories, and some healthcare considerations. Each one of these products that I'm talking about today will be linked in the description below. Oh, gosh, kabish, 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 kabish. The first item is a safe place for your ferret to sleep. Many ferret owners, including us, opt to free roam their ferrets throughout the day. They either give their ferrets access to a single room 24 seven or several rooms throughout the house. However, your ferret is gonna need a safe place to sleep and be secure in times when you might need to contain them. Therefore, it's always a good idea to have a cage on hand, even if you free roam your ferret. What we recommend is a combination of several hours outside of the cage free roaming throughout the house, as well as a cage to contain your ferret. If you want an extensive step-by-step -step checklist on how to ferret-proof your entire house, make sure to check the video series we did on that topic linked in the description below. We bought the Double Ferret Nation cage to work in combination with free roaming our three ferrets. We love the Double Ferret Nation cage because it's easy to clean, it's sturdy, and it's big. I think it is even more than twice the minimum size requirements for a cage, according to Ferrets for Dummies. Again, what we recommend is allowing your ferret to free roam for a majority of the day, and then also letting them use a cage for short periods of time. If you wanna see my in-depth review of ferret cages, make sure to check that video linked in the description below. Oh, yeah, that's a good video. You did it, you did good. Finding a good water bowl can be very difficult because along with flipping bowls over, ferrets are also notorious for splashing in their water bowl and getting everything around it soaking wet. Make sure to avoid food and water bowls that have any rubber or silicone on them because your ferret could bite it, chew it, ingest it, and get something called an intestinal obstruction, which could be very dangerous. What we recommend is we actually found a spill-proof water bowl that we use. It's like a combo food and water dish. And what's nice is it has a automatic feeder water bottle attached to it. And so it fills throughout the day and fills a little like reservoir for them. And the hole in it is so tiny that even our biggest splasher, Newt, is unable to splash water everywhere. So I would recommend looking into one of those. I will make sure to link to the combo food and water bowl that we use in the description below. Next up, you'll need a place for your ferret to go to the bathroom. According to Ferrets for Dummies, ferrets go to the bathroom every three to four hours. So that is a lot of poop and pee. What we found works best for us is to have one litter box in every room of the house that your ferret has access to. Also, make sure to place a litter box in your ferret's cage. For our ferret's litter box, we make sure to use a low lip litter pan that's large enough to fit our ferret's entire body. We've also opted to use potty pads instead of litter because for us, it's easier to clean. I'll make sure to link to the potty pads and the litter pan that we use in the description below. Lastly, as far as basic housing requirements go for your ferret, you'll need to think about creating a comfy environment for your ferret to sleep because after all, ferrets sleep a lot and you wanna make sure that they're comfortable. When it comes to picking items for your ferret to sleep and cozy up into, you should opt for items that are easy to clean and don't have any loose cords or parts that could be bitten off. One item that I really recommend you stay away from is something by Marshall Pet, which is a very big ferret brand in the United States. They have this product called like an octopus. It's red, has polka dots on it, these little fabric tubes. And unfortunately, several ferrets have gotten stuck and either suffocated or gotten strangled inside of it. I know that's really scary to talk about, but I recommend staying away from that product. Instead, I recommend you opt for fleece blankets and hammocks. I'd like to mention something else as far as basic housing requirements go. There's more and more data to suggest that prolonged exposure to sunlight throughout the day can cause harmful health problems like adrenal disease. What you can do to potentially mitigate or prevent this 
is wherever your ferret spends a lot of their time sleeping throughout the day, be it in their cage or somewhere throughout the house, make sure you cover that with a dark fabric so that it can be really dark inside that space. One item that you could opt to buy is they have these black cage covers that fit over a cage like a ferret nation. So you could look into those. I'll make sure to link to those in the description below. You can also build your ferret a dark box by taking a cardboard box, cutting a hole in it, feeding a tube through it, and then to keep it extra dark, you can actually drape a blanket over it. Our ferrets really enjoy sleeping in there. Now that your basic housing requirements are set up for your ferret, let's talk about food. So the pet industry is going through a major shift right now as far as pet food goes, especially for dog and cat food. Now ferret food on the other hand has a long way to go. Whether you plan to feed your ferret a kibble diet or a raw prey diet that consists of muscle, organ meat, bones, it's important to at least understand the basic nutritional needs of your ferret first and foremost. Ferrets are something called obligate carnivores, and that means that they require nutrients that are only found in animal flesh. And while they may be able to ingest plant matter that can often be found in ferret kibble, that doesn't mean that they actually have the proper physiology to digest and process this stuff. I know ferret diets can be kind of confusing as a new ferret owner because a lot of times you'll see at the pet store, ferret products like food and treats will look like this. Pictures of fruit and vegetables and grains, which should not be included in your ferret's diet. Also, oftentimes the ferret section of the pet store is right next to the other small animals. Think guinea pigs, hamsters, rats, and other animals that are part of the rodent family. Now, contrary to what you might believe, ferrets are not in fact rodents. They're a lot more closely related to your dog or cat, and they would like the opportunity to hunt a rat rather than befriend one. There are so many more interesting facts I would love to teach you about ferrets on this topic, but I will make sure to go more in depth on that in another video linked in the description below. Basically, as far as this food section of the video goes, I'll say what you need to keep in mind is a basic list of ingredients that you should avoid. Now this list is ever evolving, so I'll make sure to link to the most up-to-date items in the description below. And in the meantime, I will also link to brands of kibble that we recommend. Now let's talk toys. Buying toys for your ferrets is a great way to spoil them. Certain toys provide great enrichment opportunities, which means they provide your ferret with opportunities to demonstrate species-specific behaviors. Getting the right enrichment in toys can actually improve the mental and physical well-being of your ferret. At home, we have a lot of toys for our three ferrets. They love to stash little cotton plushy toys, but we make sure to avoid toys that have any plastic eyes on them or any rubber or foam parts that our ferrets could ingest. Our ferrets also really enjoy cat wands. It gives them an opportunity to stalk and pounce something. And in the past, we've also been able to do something I will call ferret fishing, where one of our ferrets stalks the cat wand and as we pull it up, the ferret comes with it. They seem to really enjoy that. Ferrets will also create toys and enrichment from items lying around your house. For us, a big one is Roomba because Almost every morning, Albert, our all-white ferret, loves to run up to Roomba on his charger and either turn him on and chase him around the house or ride him. It's really fun to watch and I'm really thankful that we have a toy in our house we didn't even know we had. Our ferrets also love to crawl into paper grocery bags and explore. One of their favorite things that we do for them is we'll crumple up junk mail and put it in there for them and then put little treats in there or little different smells. This is a really fun activity for them. Now, okay, as far as toys go in general, the most important toy you can get your ferret by far is tubes. Ferrets love tubes, ask any ferret owner you know, and they will tell you tubes are like their ferret's favorite thing in the whole world. So the best thing you can do is get multiple tubes. Oftentimes you can stitch them together. You can intertwine and tangle them. Um, our ferrets love when we throw a bunch of tubes on the floor and put a blanket over it, because I think it simulates maybe like a burrow or something like that, or a burrowing system. They go crazy chasing each other, fighting, wrestling in there. They love it. So above all, get some tubes. I will make sure to link to our favorite ones in the description below. 
Our white ferret Albert also loves to chase balls that we throw throughout the house. And recently we got this electronic one called Sphero that you can control and he loves chasing that one. I will make sure to link to that product in the description as well. There are so many more fun toys I could talk about for your ferrets, both DIY toys and fun toys you can get at the pet store. But I will save that for another video and I will link to that video in the description below. The takeaway for this video is I would recommend getting your ferret at least a few stashable safe toys for them, as well as maybe a cat wand or two. And lastly, please get your ferret some tubes. They will be so happy. In this section, I'm gonna talk about a few items that may be helpful to you as a new ferret owner. But before I do, if you're new to my channel, my name is Haley, and I post educational and entertaining videos about ferrets every week. So if you're enjoying my content, now is the perfect time to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. People who don't have ferrets always ask me, do ferrets smell? And the answer is yeah, a little bit. Honestly, no more than a dog or a cat or a hamster or a rat. But if the smell does bug you or if you have a particularly sensitive nose, I would recommend getting a pet safe air filter. There's one that we really like and I will make sure to link to that one in the description below. The next item you should have on your shopping list is some kind of travel carrier for your ferret. This is gonna be when you need to take your ferret somewhere last minute or you need to take your ferret to the vet. Another item that could be used in its place is a ferret backpack like this. We've had a lot of fun taking our ferrets on adventures in one of these. Next up is an item if you plan to spend a lot of time with your ferret outside of your house. This would be a playpen for your ferret. So we have a particular one that we found a lot of success with. I will make sure to link to that in the description below. If you end up looking at other brands, I would recommend don't look for ones that have a lot of horizontal bars that they'll easily climb. Also, don't look for ones that are made for rabbits or guinea pigs because it's gonna be really easy for your ferret to escape and get out of those. Next item, if you plan on taking your ferret outside a lot, is getting them a harness and a leash. But keep in mind, if your ferret is relatively young, say, under a year, especially under six months, that harness may be too big for them and they could slip out. But the older they get, the better it's gonna fit, so I would recommend getting one. Now a random item on this list I wanna talk about is getting yourself some nail clippers. Your ferret is gonna to need to have their nails clipped every two to three weeks, so you need to have those on hand. We have used cat clippers in the past, but you can also use human nail clippers too. I have a video that I made on the quickest, easiest way to cut your ferret's nails, so make sure to check that video linked in the description below as well. Now I wanna talk about a couple first aid related items for your ferret. So keeping your ferret safe and healthy, of course, is one of your top priorities as a ferret owner. Now there's a couple items that I really wouldn't wanna be without with our three ferrets. Number one is Vaseline, believe it or not. So Vaseline for us has helped potentially prevent intestinal obstructions with our ferrets. So at some point in time, they've ingested something relatively small, but still kind of dangerous. And in order to help that item pass through, we've given our ferret a little bit of Vaseline. Now you don't wanna do this all the time or regularly. It's not a supplement by any means, but it is good to have on hand in an emergency. The next item on this first aid list would be flavorless Pedialyte. So flavorless Pedialyte is something you're gonna to wanna to have on hand in case your ferret gets sick and they don't feel quite up to drinking as often as they should be. Dehydration is a huge risk with ferrets and it's something that could be easily avoided if you have something like flavorless Pedialyte on hand. Make sure not to get any flavors, any ones that have sugar or anything like that. You just want run of the mill, flavorless, clear Pedialyte. The third item I wanna talk about as far as ferret first aid items goes is something called Carnivore Care. Carnivore Care is a product by Oxbow Animal Health and it's basically this nutritional supplement. It comes in a powder form and you add water to it. And basically it's something to have on hand in case your ferret gets so sick that they can't feed themselves. When we first got Moose, um, he came down with the flu. It may have even turned into pneumonia. He was so sick, he couldn't even lift his chin to eat. And in my opinion, had we not had this kind of 
liquid paste um, nutrient thing for him, he would not have survived. So I really recommend having that in hand as well. I will link to that in the description below. Lastly, for this video, I want to talk about a couple important healthcare considerations for your ferret. They're not exactly items to have in your house, but they're a couple things you really should have in order before you bring a ferret home. Number one is you need to find a vet that treats ferrets in your area. So at this point in time, ferrets are still considered an exotic animal, even though they're very common. So even though a local vet may see cats and dogs, they may not feel comfortable seeing ferrets. And what's really scary is you may have an emergency and you go, I guess I'll just take them to the closest vet and they say, sorry, we don't treat them. And you get stuck in a really tight spot. So the best thing you can do is find a vet well in advance of bringing your ferret home. Number two is you need to have an emergency savings fund. So something that we unfortunately learned the lesson of was that ferrets can be very expensive. And I actually go into this in another video, which I will also link below. But ferrets have uh, a lot of health problems, unfortunately, and they can also get into trouble in different dangerous ways. Our first ferret, Moose, within his first six months to year of life, there was a couple incidences where we needed to rush him to the vet. It was really helpful that we had an emergency fund to pull money from so that we could afford the best care possible. So I would recommend, in my opinion, if you can have about $500 set aside to pay for surprise vet bills. Now this is outside the cost of your cage, food, accessories, toys, any of the other stuff we talked about in this video. This is a separate savings account. The best thing that you can do is prepare for proper health care for your ferret. All right, those are my top essential items as a new ferret owner. I hope you found this video helpful. If there's anything else you felt like we left out, make sure to leave a comment below. And if this was Weasley, the best video you've seen all day, make sure to like, subscribe, leave a comment, and turn on that notification bell. All right, bye guys. I'm a weasel, he's a weasel, he's a little weasel man. He's on my weasels, I love my weasels. Look at this sneezel, weasel man. Oh, sneezel, sneezel, weasel, sneezel, weasel, weasel man. Sneezel, weasel, weasel, sneezel. Oh my gosh, the little percuses. Cut them in already.